Hello, my name's Dave Ford, and this, let's say hello, is my dog, Logan, out once again on a walk in the countryside. But we're not in the New Forest today. We're in Dorset. In fact, a little village called Gussage All Saints. It's about eight miles northeast of Blandford Forum. And today we'll be doing a three and a half mile circular walk from the village up to a place called Knowlton, where there's a very ancient historic site, which I'm looking forward to exploring. So do join us. It's quite a chilly day, about six, seven degrees. And what are we, 4th of January? It's a little overcast. I'm keeping my fingers crossed that the light levels are gonna be okay. I'm using the GoPro today and they're notoriously bad in low light, but as I say, keep my fingers crossed, we should be okay. So do join us. Well, we'll start off the walk uh, from the village itself and have a little look at some of the, the buildings. It's quite a sweet little village. And you can see we're standing right by the, the church. So let's have a look at that. Now, unfortunately, it's locked, so we can't actually go inside. Originally built in, well, between 1290 and 1350, and it had a, a Victorian makeover and was restored and refurbished in 1864. The uh, tower that you can see there was built in three stages and was finished in the 15th century. I think it has something like five bells in total. And it's, I'm told it has an 18th century organ which comes from Westminster Abbey where it was used for choir practice. Let's have a little look round. As I say, it's a shame that um, it's not open. We've been quite lucky on some of our new forest walks in that uh, all of the, um, they've all been accessible as it were. But the only thing I wanted to show you as we go around here, slightly unusual, you'll see that um, access to the belfry is from a, a door from, from the outside. Oh! <laughs> well, I timed that well, didn't I? <laughs> Anyway, Logan wants to kick on, so we're now going to carry on with a little wander through the village itself before we uh, get out into the countryside. Well, this really is a quintessential Dorset village. I say its name's Gussage All Saints. The word Gussage is uh, it's really two Saxon words from. Uh, Geese or Gus, G Y S E, which means water breaking forth, and uh, sick, which means um, water course. And there's a small stream that passes through the village that joins the River Allen. But look at this lovely thatched cottage. What's that called? Church cottage. It really is quite, quite pretty. In fact, some very pretty buildings all the way down. This is the main high street, I suppose you'd call it, that passes through the village. And uh, Holly Tree Cottage. I love some of the names of these houses. Well, I'm pleased to say there's a pub. So at least we've got somewhere to go to when we come back. Show it to you. It's the Drover's Inn. It's a 17th century pub. I think it was originally called the Earl Hague. But in 2016, it was bought by a community benefit society to save it for the village. Uh, I think that um, some developers had bought it and it was gonna be turned into a house. And I'm told that there is a ghost uh, a phantom highwayman that haunts the cellar. <laughs> oh, it looks as though it's um, a very dog friendly pub by the looks of things. There we go. <laughs> well, 
but uh, just looking at the view isn't that beautiful now the author Thomas Hardy lived in the village at one time and he referred to this inn in several of his uh, several of his novels right well we'll continue heading uh, where are we heading east out of the village I am um, one of the reasons that uh, I'm doing this particular walk is at Christmas I was given a present a book um, history walks in Dorset by John Wilkes now it was published in 2007 so I'm hoping it's reasonably up to date but I don't think we'll get lost it's a fairly straightforward circular route he says hopefully and just in case we didn't know which county we were in there is the Dorset flag flying proudly away well, we're just coming to the end of the village and uh, we're a place called Amen Corner I love these uh, old-fashioned finger posts there you go Dorset Amen Corner I'm not 100% sure what 005103 means it could be a map reference I'm not too sure now the reason this area is called Amen Corner is that once upon a time there was a chapel here which was originally a timber construction uh, basically it was a meeting place and a place of prayer and Henry III was said to have called there in the 13th century but it, it's not here anymore but there is a lovely little cottage as you can see it's called Amen Cottage thatched and I think it's just called Amen Cottage because it's the last house in the village right we are now going to head down this little road out of the village and uh, head towards Knowlton What have we got here? Gosh, we've got chutney, marmalade, uh, crab apple jelly. Wow, we'll have to stop here on the way back, I think, Logan. Right, we're now going to come off this little track. Somebody sawing some logs in the background. And we're now going to follow this footpath and uh, get out into the country at last hopefully it's not going to be too muddy as I've probably said in previous videos certainly in the New Forest we've had a lot of rain in the, uh, the autumn and early winter autumn of 2019 and uh, gosh we're in 2020 now but you can see from that stream how uh, overflowing and fast flowing it is as well Well, folks have finally made it to our destination Knowlton let me show you what we're going to be investigating let's have a look at the sign to start off with Knowlton Church and Earthworks right well I'll tell you a little bit more about the church later but uh, we'll start off with the uh, the earthworks and as you can see 
it's quite a substantial henge. Now there are four henges around here constructed in well between 2000, 2500 BC and if you look on the map you can see where they were located. There are a couple to the uh, west of here but they're long gone they're under plough and there's one to the south again that that's pretty much um, under plough and then there's this really large henge here which is complete and it's very it's a sacred enclosure basically it's a a, a ditch which is inside not outside so it couldn't possibly have been something to uh, uh, as a defensive fort or anything because well your attackers would be higher than than you so this circle consists of an earthen bank with a, a ditch inside there are two uh, entrances and the ring is oval shaped it's about 106 meters at its longest and about 96 meters at its shortest the ditch which I'm in now is 10 meters wide and about a meter deep although it seems much more deeper than that and the outer bank is 10 meters wide and 1.75 meters tall and the bank around here well it sort of provided a, a grandstand <laughs> with uh, the crowd kept at a distance by this uh, by this ditch. Now you'll notice that there's, there's a flipping big church right in the middle of the henge. So let me tell you a bit more about that. <laughs> well, it was built here by the the Normans uh, in the early 12th century on top of a, a Saxon church or Saxon chapel that was here before. It was remodeled in the 14th century when the the tower was added um, and there was a, a thriving village around the church until 1348-1349 when the Black Death decimated the, the local population. The surviving villages fled and the village was basically abandoned. But the church however was still used at various times afterwards until about 1747 when the roof collapsed and then after that it was uh, abandoned and this is filming from the other side we've got loose dogs all around me but we'll see if we can carry on filming so the nearby Victorian built church at Woodlands has, the, uh, has got the 12th century stone font that originates uh, from this church and the way it was deliberately sited in the middle of what was basically a pagan place of, of, of worship demonstrates really how those that were charged with converting the local population to Christianity did so by well adopting old older pagan sites and then assimilating them into their religion. Well, I thought we'd just come inside although it's fairly open as you can see Apparently there are loads of ghost stories about this place. Uh, apparently there's a phantom horse and rider that are said to gallop across the site in the dead of night and then pass straight through the church as if it wasn't there. There's also a story of the, a shadow of a weeping woman, possibly a nun, seen kneeling outside the church. But uh, quite a few paranormal groups often investigate this site and report ethereal voices chattering above them and figures dressed in black passing before them and then vanishing. And let's just look up here. Certainly if you look on um, if you look on YouTube there are uh, there are plenty of videos done by folk that follow the paranormal based here I'll let you decide I'm not feeling anything at the moment put it that way now here's something I want to show you to the north of the henge two magnificent yew trees and uh, there is something slightly 
unusual about them as we get a little bit closer you'll notice that there are loads of um, well ribbons and trinkets now, it's a bit dark in here so let me put see if I can put a light on I think it'll make a huge amount of difference but yeah both of the trees are absolutely covered in in ribbons now one of my YouTube friends a chap called Mark English he uh, reckons or he's a bit of an expert in this sort of thing and tells me that it's uh, possibly pagan I don't know but certainly a bit unusual that's for sure now just to the northeast of the henge is a barrow called the Great Barrow which you can see there with a few trees growing on top apparently it's the largest in Dorset again Bronze Age built anything between 2000 and 1000 BC and there are loads of barrows around this whole area possibly as many as 35 but that particular barrow is 40 meters in diameter and six meters high it did have two ditches but uh, now those have gone they're all under plow i'll well, have one more little walk round the site i always find these places fascinating when you think that this henge has been here for four four and a half thousand years you just imagine what it was used for we don't really know we can only guess but whatever it is it stood the test of time and I suppose there is a bit of an atmosphere to the place at least it's protected now for the future so we're going to head back now uh, we'll head back to the pub at Gussage All Saints with a nice little walk that's going to take us over some um, chalk downland we'll see you later Well folks, we've come to the end of our walk. We hope you enjoyed it, our first walk in Dorset. By the way, the book that I mentioned uh, at the beginning, I might have got the title wrong, it's Walks Into History, Dorset. But I put a photo up of the cover anyway. I say hopefully you enjoyed the walk. Uh, if you did, please like, uh, comment, put a thumbs up and subscribe and Hopefully you'll be able to join us for another walk in the countryside sometime in the future. Logan and I are off to the Drover's Inn now for some light refreshment. In the meantime, thanks for watching and cheerio. Mm -hmm.